Hey guys, so in this part of the course, we're going to talk about prompts. And prompts are basically the instructions that you give ChatGPT to do something. Okay, so generally they start with a verb like write, create, edit, give, do. Things like that are, and then you write the sentence. And that sentence basically gives ChatGPT some context of what you want done, what you want generated, or what you're trying to achieve, right? So I'm gonna give you an example of a prompt right now. I'm gonna say to ChatGPT, write two paragraphs about climate change. Now prompts can be high level, or they can also be more specific. Write two paragraphs about climate change and include, or just dot, full stop, include how it's impacting humanity, right? So you can give ChatGPT sophisticated instructions, and by that I mean just think about like you're talking to a human. Like I said, if you're having a conversation with someone, but don't think about it as a robot, just tell it what you want in your natural language, how you would normally just say this to someone, tell ChatGPT what you want, give it some context. More information will, of course, provide more context for the artificial intelligence to generate a closer result to what you're expecting. But you don't necessarily have to be super detailed you can just leave it like that write two paragraphs about climate change and then just click here and look at that it created two paragraphs about climate change for you climate change is a pressing global issue that is causing widespread environmental and social impacts it refers to the long-term changes in earth's climate patterns including rising temperatures changes in precipitation and more frequent extreme weather events the primary cause of climate change is human activities particularly the burning of fossil fuels such as coal, oil, and gas, which releases large amounts of carbon dioxide and other greenhouse gases into the atmosphere. All right, I won't read the whole two paragraphs for you, but what I wanted to show you is look at that. With just that very simple prompt, very simple instruction, ChatGPT generated the two paragraphs that we wanted. You, can, you will notice a couple of things now that we've generated this content from ChatGPT is you can copy it, by just clicking here, copy. So it's just copied this text for you. You can go to Word and just paste it, right? The two paragraphs about climate change, or you can paste it on your website or whatever, wherever it is you're working. It doesn't really matter. I just wanted to give you that quick example. Just go back here and then this Thumbs up, thumbs down. You don't have to click on any of these. Of course, it's just optional for you. You can also just select it and copy and paste it if you want, right? And you can select just parts of it if you wanted to again. I'm just showing you here a couple of buttons just because I want you to be aware of them. There's a little arrow here. If you click on that, it'll just take you to the bottom of the content or you can just simply scroll. Obviously, this will be more handy for you when you have more and more content generated. You've noticed here is also like a button regenerate response. So if you click on that, it'll just generate two more paragraphs. It'll change them. And it's asking you here if the response is better, right? And this might be because you read the content that was created for you and you didn't like it. And you might want a second version or a, an iteration of that content. Again, if you, Notice now we have these two arrows. This is two of two. So if you click here on the left hand side arrow, it'll take you to that initial text that was generated for you. And if you click on the right hand side arrow, it'll go back to that second content that was generated for you. Okay. Now, again, this is more feedback for the artificial intelligence. Keep in mind that artificial intelligence is always learning. So ChatGPT is not learning just from you and what you enter and with the feedback that you give, but it's constantly and regularly iterating and learning from the content that millions of people are providing worldwide when they're using it 
and then it's iterating and improving on itself. Now, the other thing I wanted to show you is, you know, when we worked on this new chat, it automatically created the new chat that relates to climate change impact here. And if you click on this pencil button, you can change the title of it or the name if you wanted to like reference it later. Or you can, of course, again, also delete it, delete the chat if you didn't want to keep a copy. And it's today because we've generated this today. My recommendation for you is don't delete anything because you might need it later. So just leave it there. It's not bothering you. It'll just keep, you know, it'll just stay at the bottom of it. And you can change it later if you wanted to by simply clicking on the edit button. And you can continue the conversation here under, under the same, you know, chat chat box under climate change impact under this like category. What I would recommend though is every time you're creating something completely new, like it's a completely new subject, new, you know, like a new theme, just create a new chat. This will help you to keep information organized, right? Like if I click here, new chat. And if you're on the paid version, just always remember to change to GPT-4. So you use the more advanced functionality. Okay. By default, it always puts you on this one. On the chat GPT-4, you can see here it has higher reasoning and more conciseness. And please notice also there's a current constraint on the most advanced version of 25 messages every three hours, but that's constantly changing and evolving and they're increasing that limit regularly. So at some point they'll just completely probably remove that limit. But just, just to ensure that the artificial intelligence continues to work without issues as the demand for it is so high right now that they, you know, they kind of put this constraint in place to avoid the over demand for ChatGPT to collapse the system. All right. But don't worry too much about that. That's just all technical stuff. They're solving it in the background. You don't need to worry about that. If you hit this constraint then just go back to the other model and in a few hours, you'll be able to continue to use if you're on the paid version. All right. I'm just going to continue using the, the free version here so you don't, so you can see how powerful it is. And you know, like you don't, um, you might not be accessing initially the paid version. So I'll just keep it on the free version. All right. But like I mentioned, climate change, and let's say here, let's just ask it a question. How, how do I cook a pizza? look at that. Cooking a pizza involves several steps. Here's a basic recipe to get you started. Ingredients and then instructions, preheat, roll out the oven, spread the pizza. You see this? It did it so fast, right guys? This is why I love ChatGPT. How do I cook a pizza? In voila, it gave you the instructions on how to do it, right? Great. And look at how smart it is. It automatically created pizza cooking instructions for you here on the left hand side, right? Which again is helpful. You can change the name if you wanted to, but like I said, it's helpful if you need to go back later on. Now, the other thing is, like I said, because climate change and pizza are two very different topics. That's why I recommend it to you to create like a new one. And that's what I would continue to recommend for you. Don't not to because you could continue to ask it questions below about different topics and it's just going to continue answering it but it'll just all be under this kind of like chat message right but if you want to keep things a little bit more organized and easier for you to find i recommend that every time you're talking about or giving chat gpt instructions or talking with chat gpt or asking it questions or trying to generate content about a particular topic just separate it in a new chat and that'll help you you know, keep your information and your results organized and it'll be easier for you to find them later on. Now they don't have right now, as you can see, like any particular like search functionality for your historical chat messages, but I'm sure they're going to be adding that pretty soon. It's just like a natural consequence that they will add a chat a search functionality for, you know, for your historical data. They'll do that at some point. All right, guys. Now, if you go to Google and you just search you know, chat GPT prompts. You're going to find here search results. 
right? Chat GPT prompts. Okay. And you can certainly use that and find some helpful chat GPT prompts from here. But also, if you just need some help, you can even ask chat GPT itself for chat GPT prompts. So you can just click here and just say chat GPT prompts. Sure, what topic would you like to explore or discuss today? I'm just going to delete this or I'm just going to put here chat GPT, GPT prompts prompts with an S. I just want to say if I did plural, it changed the result. It did, right? See that? I made a typo here and I forgot to add the S. So obviously it took this as a singular, right? Sure. Yeah, prompt about what? It's asking me about what? But then when I said chat GPT prompts, which was what I actually searched in Google, look at this. Here are some prompts you can choose from. And it gave me 10, right? What are some effective ways to overcome procrastination? How, what, what, how, right? These are just some example of prompts, like questions or instructions, right? But you can also say things like I mentioned before, create, write, outline, and then you, or check, or give me, and then enter whatever you want done, okay? Now, because this is smart, right? I can also say it gave me a, a couple of prompts, right? But what if I wanted more? Um, so you can say, can you please provide more prompts? And look at that. It gave you 10 more prompts. Of course, here are some prompts for you. So you see, that's what I mentioned, that it's like having a conversation with someone, right? Now, what about if I wanted prompts for writing an email? So give me 20 prompts for writing an email. And look at that. Write an email requesting information from a company. Write an email requesting feedback from a colleague. Write an email to a professor asking for a deadline extension. So it's giving you here prompts you can use to write an email, right? Like I mentioned, ChatGPT is super powerful. You see how quickly it generated that? And even it, you can use ChatGPT to help you work with ChatGPT like I just showed you a second ago, right? I didn't know which prompts to use. And I just asked it, asked ChatGPT, give me some prompts. And then I asked it, give me some more prompts. And it gave me more. And then I thought, okay, I'm actually going to get now more specific because I want prompts about writing an email. And it gave me 20 prompts for writing an email, right? So you can Google ChatGPT prompts and search a lot of articles, websites that have prompts for you. Or you can just ask ChatGPT and it'll directly give you the prompts that you can use some prompts you can use. And like I mentioned before, if you want prompts for something very specific, well, just give ChatGPT specific context. Like I mentioned in this other example before, prompts for writing an email. Here's the contents. Here's the context. I'm not just telling it, just write prompts. Give me some prompts, and which can be very generic, right? It can be prompts about cooking, working, reading, like pretty much about anything. So it'll randomly probably pick a couple but if you want to get something more specific, just give it some context. Just say, give me 20 prompts for writing an email. Okay. And then voila, you'll get prompts specific to writing an email like you're seeing here below. So like we covered before, making sure that you use relevant prompts as you're working with ChatGPT for professional or personal use is very important because the quality of the prompts that you use will, of course, have a direct result in the output, in the outcome of what you get from ChatGPT. Now, sometimes you don't really know how to prompt ChatGPT. And for that reason, it's really good to leverage on what's out there 
and potential prompt lists or prompt resources, which you can use from Google, from other websites, from other people, from articles and so forth, right? I'm going to share with you right now a couple of my favorite prompts or prompt tools and resources which you can use as you're working with ChatGPT. So the first one I want to share with you is called Prompt Pal. So if you just go to promptpal.net, you'll get to this prompt generating tool and you'll see here that they have a couple of, you know, like a basic search functionality where you can enter, you know, the type of prompt that you're looking for. They also have here a couple of filters which you can use for prompts for content writing, education, development, and marketing. And if you scroll down, you can see here a couple of prompts, write a job offer letter template, generate tips for improving workplace communication, and so forth, right? So some really good prompts that you can find in this tool. And you can access those prompts for free, like you're seeing here on screen. And they also have some categories here. TikTok prompts, Instagram prompts, etc. right? Community and so forth. So I'll let you explore this tool on your own, but basically this is one of the prompt tools that I wanted to share with you in this part of the course. Now, the other one is called ChatGPT prompts, and I'll share this with link with you uh, in this lecture of the course and the resources because it is a bit of a long URL. So don't worry about the URL. I, I'll add the link for you here. But basically, this is a chat GPT prompts that we created ourselves, where we've curated basically and created our own set of prompts by category. So writing from scratch, improving your writing, repurposing content, creativity, learning, solving problems, business and email writing. Now you can use any of these prompts for the different categories and topics that we covered here as you're working with ChatGPT. And last but not least, I wanted to remind you that you can use ChatGPT itself to create prompts which you can use. For instance, we can say here, give me a list of 10 prompts about learning. give me a list of 10 prompts about learning and chat gpt just generated a couple of prompts for you what are some effective learning strategies that you have used in the past and how have they helped you how do you approach learning material or concepts that you find difficult or intimidating what are some of the ways to overcome obstacles or challenges in the learning process and so forth I'm not going to read all of these, but like I mentioned before, you can easily generate prompts right here from ChatGPT that can help you as you're working with ChatGPT itself. Isn't that incredible? You can use ChatGPT to work with ChatGPT like you just saw a moment ago. Now, just to recap quickly, you can use ChatGPT itself to generate prompts. You can, of course, go to google.com and just Google, you know, free prompts for chat GPT and you'll get a ton of prompts, websites and resources which you can use. And we covered prompt pal as well and our very own chat GPT prompts. And I'll share this URL with you guys so you can leverage on the chat GPT prompts that we have curated and also created ourselves to work with chat GPT. And in a moment, when we're going to the use cases and different real world examples of ChatGPT and harnessing the power of ChatGPT for productivity in your personal projects for yourself and for your business, we're going to go into some of these prompts that we have covered here. And we're going to create a couple of examples for you with specific use cases so you can see how ChatGPT works in real life and in practice and you can use that and leverage for your own work or for your personal projects all right guys i'm glad that you learned how to use prompts what they are and where you can get them so you can work with ChatGPT and get the best outcome i'll see you in the next one cheers bye